some instant street reaction from Chief Investment Strategist at IG Wealth Management, Philip Peterson, one of our regular guests. Philip, it's great to have you here with us. Um, so now we are uh, uh, working our way through bank earnings right. season. What have been your, your takeaways so far here? Well, the key one for me is the provisioning for loan losses. And we've seen this as a theme over the past couple quarters. It's been increasing. It continues to increase. I think it's a reflection on the broader macro economy in Canada and a little bit in the United States that things are slowing. So we're starting to see economic activity slow down and that's impeding the consumer and their ability to, to pay off their debt. Consumers, and Paul was talking about commercial real estate in the U.S. being something to watch as well in manufacturing. And so all this talk about the need for interest rates to come down, is that a consideration in this dialogue as well? Absolutely. I think it, it lines up perfectly with the environment that we're in and, and what the Bank of Canada or the Federal Reserve needs to do at this point. Uh, they've been patient, I think, with the economy and with inflation. And now we're, we've seen the Bank of Canada respond with uh, with two cuts and probably, you know, I think, two or three more coming before the end of the year. And the Federal Reserve ready to start with its interest rate cuts. Now, when banks are provisioning for the potential of bad loans, that isn't necessarily the end result. And I guess if things don't uh, end up in a so-called worst case scenario, that's profit that can come back to their bottom lines at some point in the future. What do you think are the determining factors on where the economy goes from here? Well, it's a great question. I think it really comes down to uh, how quickly we can bring rate relief to the consumer. Um, and we have to remember that any interest rate cuts today, as, as Powell said prior, uh, come with variable and long lags into the, the actual impact to the economy. So anything that happens today, we're probably not going to see until 2025. And it's how, how can the consumer kind of manage the debt burden with the already inflation burden that they felt over the past couple of years? through yeah. the next little while. Now, uh, on the one hand, uh, all the banks are having to navigate against that macro backdrop. That's not to say that banks can't have um outperformance versus their peers. Uh, in the case of Scotiabank, which has put this uh, fresh focus, for example, on uh, their business here at home, they showed some progress there. When you think about the banking landscape, the competitive nature of the banking landscape in our own backyard, where, by the way, we've seen a lot of deal activity over the last year or so, what stands out to you right now? Well, you've seen some divergence in terms of the, the quality of the results from the banks, and we just saw it over, let's take the last three, right? TD and BMO, you know, perhaps disappointing. Uh, Scotia doing better and I think RBC likely is going to come through with better results as well so you're you're not seeing all banks treated as one there are differences in terms of the results and it, it's basically the good and the less good and how do you feel about investing in that sector right now well what we've seen is the banks I would say largely as a group have been driven by the macro factors and, and that's by interest rate expectations the the uh, re-steepening of the yield curve um, that has been benefiting the banks over the last little while the expectation of interest rates coming down that's been helping the banks they're reasonably valued so if you believe that we're going to see a continued normalization of the yield curve and normalization of interest rates then it's decent it's a decent environment for the banks notwithstanding some of the, the uh, credit concerns. Do they get some additional attention as dividend payers if we enter into an environment where rates come down but the economy doesn't collapse? Yes, exactly. I, I think, and even like if we're talking about the Canadian banks, if the if the Canadian economy does slow down uh, even into a recession, I think the banks continue to be well managed. They will manage through it. It's just the will they be the leaders in the market performance, or will they just be falling with with uh, decent performance. So we like the banks. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from them. I don't know if I would be overweight because they're not as cheap as they were, say, a year ago. Um, they do have some headwinds, but the dividends, as you point out, are very attractive. They're, they're likely to continue to increase those dividends going forward as well.